In map is the tool that everybody talks about. Big groups backed by countries use it. Research papers were written only about it. And the whole hacking community loves it. Because of that, I decided to make a course for this great tool called InMap. This tool's job is to scan network, so we will learn networks quickly, and then we will jump in and see the power of our tool. This course, God willing, I want it to be the only course you need to learn InMap. That means after watching this course, you won't need to watch any other video or any other course about the tool. I try to look at what everyone else is doing and include everything in one course in one place. At the end of the course, I will give you a cheat sheet. It's like one page that has everything we learned in a simple way. And I will also give you a book that will help you with the course so you can get information from it too. This way you will have the videos, the cheat sheet and the book. And more than that, in every lesson I will show you extra options you can use besides the ones we will use together. And the last thing, at the end of this course, we will try to do a scan on a target and combine everything we learned for you and one more at the end i will make a hacking video as a gift different from the videos on the internet but i won't say what it is now so i expect the course content to be very heavy to the point that the person might need to watch the video one to three times to understand everything in it we will also make homework so you can sharpen your skills and make your knowledge stronger okay the course will start from networks then board and surface scanning then identifying the operating system and after that using in script for automatic scanning and we will finish with how to gather information in an organized way because InMap gives a huge amount of info and how you can bypass firewalls and finally how to use AI with InMap so basically like I said everything in one place okay so to help you imagine the course with me consider this box as our course First, we will see how to download InMap. After that, we will look at a tool called Wireshark and we will use it so you can understand the explanation better. But before we jump into InMap, I will explain it works in a simple way. Only the part we need without too much talking. Because how can you scan a network if you don't understand it? After that, we will jump into the big boss the nmap tool we will see most of its options how to use its advanced script and some tricks that will help you then we will look at some external tools that scan the network too just so we make the benefit bigger okay now when you reach this stage you will need a way to show in map results clearly for example like a tree style and we will learn this finally we go into firewall by passing methods then we follow that with the artificial intelligence and the last thing is the test experiment we talked about let me give you the part of networking that we actually need for our explanation the internet is basically a huge number of devices talking to each other that's the simple idea there are types of communication the first type is called peer-to-peer -peer. this means the first device talks to the second device directly with no middle system between them. Good, this is a good system because there is no middle server taking all the information. That's why it's used in some networks like the Tor network. But of course, it has downsides. It has good things too, but we won't talk about them now. The system we will deal with most of the time is called centralized. This one has a simple server in the middle. So your device talks to the server and the server serves the other person. For example, I upload my video to YouTube and YouTube shows you the video. So there is someone in the middle, like a server, controlling all types of communication. They can delete the video anytime they want, they can block you anytime they want, and everything like that. Okay, these are types of communication. Now, how does the communication itself happen? What actually happens when you type a website name? First, like we said, every communication has two sides the source, which is the sender and the destination which is the receiver the sender is you if you want to send data and the destination is the one receiving the data like youtube or any other service let's split the sending process into several layers just understand them with me then i will show you the important parts you will actually take from this the first layer is where the protocol is chosen we have many protocols like dns 
HTTP, P2P, and so on. When you open Chrome or any browser and type google.com, google.com is text. The internet doesn't understand text, it must convert it to an IP, so it uses DNS. DNS converts what you wrote, google.com, into an IP. This is only one protocol. There are many and each protocol has its own job. Like we said, if you want to translate a name to an IP, you can't use FTP because FTP is a file transfer protocol. So the protocol depends on the job you want to do. Then we go down to the second layer, the presentation layer. Here the data is shown or encrypted. If there is encryption, it gets applied here. If there is displaying of data like HTML or file format like JPG or MP3, they are created or decoded here depending on whether you are sending or receiving. Then we go to an important part, the session part. This is where the actual communication starts between you and the other side. You start opening a session to talk to the other device after opening the session or let's say to open a session you must choose one of two protocols TCP or UDP. What is the difference? Let me explain simply. We have TCP and UDP. If you feel this part is hard at the end I will give you the simple summary you actually need or if you want full understanding you can rewatch this part. TCP is more reliable than UDP. UDB is faster. TCP's goal is security and correctness. TCP will not open any session until you send to the server, the server replies, and then you tell the server you received the reply. This is called the three-way handshake. In simple words, you talk, then the server talks, then you talk again. Very easy, because this is not a full network course. This is an in-map course, I'll keep it simple. UDB sends data fast and doesn't care about confirmation. UDB will just send the data directly, without you talking to the server and the server responding. Why? Because sometimes speed is more important. Like live streams, it doesn't matter if some data is missing. You might watch the stream normally, then suddenly there is lag. Some data is lost, then it continues and everything is good. But with TCB, if you are logging in or entering banking info, nothing can be missing. If in the packets will be number one, two, three, four. If packet number four didn't arrive, you will tell the server, server, packet four didn't arrive. Send it again, please. This keeps everything in order and lets you see the data exactly as intended. Finally, after we open the session and it shows the right protocol, we go down to the next layer, the network layer. This is where IB works, ARB works, and ICMP works. These are also protocols. For example, ICMP is the protocol behind the command ping. We will see it later. Just remember, this is the one responsible for that. At the end, as you see, there are two more layers, but these two layers are full networking lesson by themselves. They won't help us in our work here, so I will skip them. But in real world, people don't use the OSI model, the seven layer model we just saw. They use something called the TCB IB model. In that model, the first three layers are merged into one layer. The transport layer stays the same, the network layer stays the same. And the last two layers, the ones we skipped, are placed into something called network flow or network access. Now the summary for anyone who didn't understand the earlier explanation, here it is in simple words. First, the application layer, this has all the protocols. These protocols are rules that define the action you want to do. If you want to control a server, you use SSH. If you want to translate a name to an IP, you use DNS. It depends on what communication you want to perform. Then below it, we have TCP and UDP. Depending on whether you want speed, UDB, or reliability and correctness, TCB. Finally, the internet layer where IB works. We will see IB version 4, IB version 6, and ICMB, the ping, all of this soon. I just wanted you to understand how the data moves, first protocols, then the type of communication, then the IB is added so we know where to send it. Because like we said, the internet is full of devices. So every device needs an identifier, like your personal ID in your country. This IB is the ID for each device. Now, we see the types of communication. 
you talk to the surfer and the surfer serves another person. Then, we explained what happens when you want to communicate with the surfer. How there will be protocols that decide the type of communication. And there will be types of communication like secure or fast. Remember, when we set the protocols in the first layer, decide how the communication works and what type of communication it will be, now, we have a lot of protocols, around 1024 protocols. These are the protocols that do most of the services we need on the internet. But these protocols are linked to their parts. What does that mean? It means that when you enter port 22, you enter the protocol called SSH, which lets you do secure logging or let's say a safe login session. So these protocols are not something you choose randomly. They are like portals. For for example, when you are in the browser and you write a website name and then type colon and write a port number like 80 or 443, these two ports, 80 and 443, will take you to HTTP port 80, takes you to the HTTP version of the website you requested. Port 443 takes you to the HTTPS version. Like we said, there are 1024 bars. So there are 1024 known protocols. These are the protocols we need. Some for communication, some for administration, some for LB translation, and some for websites and so on. There are many protocols. And as we said, we have TCP and UDP. Some protocols use only TCP and some use both of them. It depends on the protocol itself. Now you have chosen the type of communication with the server. Let's say you and the server want to enter the website. So you choose the protocol HTTPS and you went to port 443. So now you finished the first layer. The website is secure, so you choose TCP. All of this happens in the background, but I want you to understand what happens behind the scenes. Then we go to the second layer. Then the third layer, in the third layer, we have the IB. The IB, like we said, is an identifier because there are many devices in the world. So every device needs its own identifier. There are two types of IBs, private IB and public IB. To explain easily, imagine your home router. Your router serves you and the other people in the house. It gives each of you a private IB. How do we know if an IP is private or public? It depends on the range, like classes, for example, 192.168 and so on. This is always private. It cannot go outside to the internet. So the router gives each device a private number, but the router itself has a public LB. This public LB is the one that goes out to the internet, your ISP. The internet provider gives it to you. Now, for example, this device wants you to it leaves the router and requests YouTube using the public IP, not the private one. So this is the IP I can see and the IP I can scan. I will never see the internal private IP. You may ask, how does the router know that this device requested YouTube and that device requested Google? This is another process topic, but the router gives each device a port and there is a surface called NAT. NAT keeps everything organized so nothing get mixed up. Let's say you requested YouTube. You went out to the internet and started receiving YouTube or this other website. Before you reach the website, there is something called a firewall. The firewall plays a big role in scanning. Sometimes a port is open like port 443 and you can reach the website, but the firewall blocks it. So in scanning, we will try to make the firewall reveal whether the surface is actually running or not. Because a port like 443 can be open, the surface is available, closed, the surface not available, filtered, a firewall is interfering. So the firewall is sitting in the middle between you and the other device. And that was our lesson in short. We said there are types of communication. Then we choose the protocol. Then we look at the port to talk using the right protocol. Then we choose TCB or UDB. And finally, with your public LB, you will go out. If you don't want to overthink it, this IB is the one we will scan and we will understand everything about it in Inma. I just wanted to give you a simple technical background for anyone who wants to go deeper or wants to understand exactly how networking works.